But I don't actually like speaking to people if I don't have enough money. I won't get paid and I'll just make the thing. I'll tell you two series that aren't doing well. Right now, my favorite action manga is... Hello and welcome back to the Manga Education Podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Chen. I run a manga and webtoon studio from the United States. We're currently working on somewhere between five and ten original series. Also, two of them are going to anime, which I'm a writer-producer on, which is really exciting. Today, we're going to be answering your questions that you submitted to me on Patreon and social media. So let's get right into it. But before then, please drop a like for educational purposes. Hopefully, we can help this video reach more people so that more people can learn about the anime manga webtoon industry. Subscribe if you're newer here because you want to see more of this stuff right let's get right into the questions these are questions submitted by you guys we start off with the patreon questions because patreons get priority if you haven't joined the patreon i post educational content there link in description if you're interested tyrese griffin says when you partner with an artist does the publisher pay both of you if you bring in more artists as the series continues do you partner with them and they also get paid by the publisher so it really depends on what your situation is you know if the publisher is the producer then they'll just pay you and then they'll pay the producer or the writer on the side. If you're the producer and the writer, they will give you a budget. You are meant to take that budget and distribute it however you please. So for some series, if I don't have enough money for the budget, I won't get paid and I'll just make the thing and I will take a higher percentage of the residuals and I will give a lot of the money to the artist to make sure that this is possible. That's the life, right? A producer oftentimes takes the most risk and sometimes they take the L for the team. But also if the series succeeds, they can reproduce pretty big rewards. So it depends on your situation, but you know, if you're just being hired as a writer, they should be paying you and then they should be paying the artist. If you're the producer, they're probably just giving you a bunch of money and you're supposed to distribute that and pay the artist and pay the writer. But you know, sometimes depends on the budget. Preep from Patreon says, how do you find a publisher that's willing to publish a full series or at least hear you out with your ideas? Probably made a bunch of videos on this, but the easy answer is the more established you are, the easier it is to find someone to take a bet on you. If you've done something before, if you've done a series, or if you've serialized or you've done something, they can expect for you to probably do it again. Probably. Or at least you have a chance at doing it again. It's not always guaranteed. Good example being Naruto. Masashi Kishimoto, popular mangaka, made Naruto. Naruto was one of the biggest series ever made in history. And then he went on to create Samurai 8, which flopped. And now he's doing Boruto, right? Because he just is trapped in that Naruto world. The second series they tried to do was unfortunately not as successful. And so it's not always guaranteed, but they're at least willing to take a bet on you. Best way to get yourself in that position where you find a publisher that's willing to take a bet on you, create your own thing. Create a story, create a series, release it somewhere where everyone can see it, publish it, promote it. If it gets big, someone's gonna give you an offer for sure. If it doesn't get big and it's not good, you're learning a lot just by making something not good. You are. Trust me when I say that the first thing you ever make in your lifetime is not gonna be good. The first thing I made when I was uh, 14, I wrote a novel called Age of Darkness. It's on Amazon. You can read it. I was 17 when I published that thing. A lot of people liked it. I look back at it and I'm like, that is absolute horse crap. <laughs> because it is nowhere near what I can do now, right? It is derivative writing styles mid. Action scenes are actually pretty cool, but impressed with 14 year old self, but I was 14 over 10 years ago. I think the key thing is you'll always be upset with your previous work. That just means you're getting better and that's good. You're getting better. Getting out things out there and just getting things done is really like the best way to position yourself to get a publishing deal. And if it's bad, you know, you're gonna learn from it and get better on the next one. Victor A. Bustamante says, will you be going to any conventions this year? If so, are you going to hold a panel or booth? Oh, I'm going to Anime Expo. I'm going to New York Comic Con. I'm going to Anime New York City. Will I be doing a panel? I don't like doing booths. I'm too antisocial for that. I just go to these cons to really take meetings. I'm very introverted, so I don't actually like speaking to people. I'm okay speaking to the camera. I'm, I'm okay speaking on a panel, but these are not things that I seek out, if that makes sense. Like someone would have to pay me to be on a panel. You know, I think I get more reach by making videos like this than I do being on a panel. Being on a panel is conceptually cool because it's a live event, but you know, like I think in terms of how many people am I talking to and reaching to, I'm reaching way more online than I am in a room. It's not really a priority of mine unless people invite me to it, in which case I'm happy to happy to do it. But yeah, for now it's just Anime Expo, Anime New York City, New York Comic Con, and we'll see after that. <laughs> Any more than that is like too much travel for me. I have to like actually write, you know? These are questions that you guys submitted on my Instagram, Inspired Author. What's your favorite action manga? Right now, my favorite action manga Sakamoto Days. It's publishing in Shonen Jump. It is the best
best action dynamic sequences I have seen in a long time. It's beating Jujutsu Kaisen, in my opinion, for choreography and clarity. The fights are way better. Sakamoto Days is probably one of the best action manga that I've seen in a long time. It's definitely the best action manga that's serializing right now. Who are the animators which are going to work on your anime project? Can't announce anything yet. We just announced like an anime teaser test that we just did with a studio. I can't say what's locked in for the actual anime series yet. We'll let you guys know as soon as I can. Which comic of yours is getting animated and when? Yeah, we're working on it right now. God Game and The Mad Gate are the two series that are currently being adapted to anime. Is it okay if I draw my manga traditionally? Of course. There's still a lot of manga that draw traditionally. So don't worry about it. What do you usually look for in an artist when you're looking one to draw your manga on webtoon? I think I look for one, an appealing style. It's hard to say, but like, you know, naturally some people that are readers gravitate towards certain styles that are very appealing that's not rocket science people judge books by its cover for the manga and webtoon space for sure i look for paneling can you tell a story in sequential panels that feels like the flow is really good i look for dynamicness of a character do your characters look stiff in those panels do they look like they can move how flexible are they can you draw different angles are your angles dynamic are your panels dynamic can you draw a cool pose like can you draw someone kicking in a weird like breakdancing position. I think that's super important to me because I do a lot of action series. How are your expressions? Can you depict a character that is super upset? Can you depict someone that's super angry, super happy? Can you basically tell a story even if without dialogue? Can I tell exactly how that character looks? They don't need to have this, but backgrounds are always nice. Being able to use 3D is always nice. Being able to work in Clip Studio Paint is always nice. Being able to work really fast. I think is super important. A lot of illustrators, for example, are beautiful. They work really well and they can create really beautiful art, but can they meet a serialization deadline? Probably not. And if they can't meet serialization deadlines and they can give me great illustrations, that doesn't mean anything because I can't release anything to the readers. So being able to work fast is also probably the most important out of anything. So it's kind of hard because it's like, you need to be able to meet all this quality, but also like you have to be able to work on a weekly schedule. Being able to manage a team is also pretty useful because I think like if you have assistants and colorists and anchors and stuff like that, being able to manage those people so that you don't have to draw everything yourself is also very useful. <sighs> that was a lot. I've just been talking for 30 minutes nonstop. How many series have you made? I'll tell you what I've made so far and what, I, what I'm announcing. I've made Just a Goblin. I made God Game. I made The Mad Gate. I made Bandit King. I made a series called Kinfire First Expedition, which is an adaptation of a board game done by the producer of Arcane League of Legends. So that's five. Samurai no Toro, six. These are all released. I did a four coma game on Gemma. I did a bunch of manga one shots, but let's say those are not, those don't count because those are just manga one shots. And then I have a Angel Wings, which is coming out. And then I have Double Kill, which is coming out. And then I have a bunch of series that are all in development that I can't speak about. But those are the ones that are, you can like literally read, except for Double Kill and Angel Wings that are coming out this year. About nine right now. There's obviously more than nine that are in production. When's Double Kill coming out? And how are you going to pay for the anime since it costs over $100,000? Double Kill is coming out hopefully later this year. We're currently speeding ahead on a production. So I just hope we can meet those deadlines. I'm really pushing the team there. How are you going to pay for the anime? I'm not the one paying for it. My publisher is paying for it. And trust me, it's more than $100,000. So yeah, <laughs> tips for people who want to become a mangaka, produce projects, put them online and market yourself, watch my videos and join my Patreon and read a lot. <laughs> Those are probably the ones. What do you do when you have an idea for a story, but find out it already exists? Everyone's worst nightmare. When you find out that your idea was not actually an original idea, which is usually the case, I'd say like, Hey, like try and find a way to twist it, make it new, make it fresh. If you just throw in a twist, like combine ideas. Good example is Blue Lock. Blue Lock, probably the original concept was like, Oh, I want to do a soccer manga. Soccer manga has already been done. Okay, great. How do I make this unique? I combine soccer manga with death game. So, you know, and then I throw like a soul leveling twist to it. Boom. You create something that feels so fresh and so new. So I'd say combining ideas is a great way to create new ones. How do you fund projects with merchandise even before they come out? Also, congrats on the animes. Thank you so much. So you're saying funding projects with merchandise, creating merchandise as a way to develop IP before you go ahead and creating the actual series. You know, I haven't seen that done very often i guess you could say like merchandise like transformers or like gundam i don't even know i don't even i don't even know if the toys came first but like let's say hot wheels hot wheels of the toys definitely came first right hot wheels the toys came first and then they decided to make now they're making a movie 
but they've also made like TV shows and stuff like that. In those scenarios, the merchandise is the main IP and all these things, the film, the TV, the entertainment is a way to feed more attention into those merchandise sales. If your goal is like merchandise, then work on the merchandise first. If your goal is storytelling, then work on the story first. The merchandise can come after. Good example of an IP that ex existed as a story turned into merchandising, Naruto, Jujutsu Kaisen, Dragon Ball. It's common to go story, IP, build that, go into merchandising. The other way around, the Hasbro's route, which is like Barbie dolls to like movie, super hard and a lot less common. And also you're not gonna get an investor that's gonna wanna invest in your on you on the story side. Because when you have uh, guys like Webtoon or whatever, throwing money around to creators, they're not gonna wanna give you money if you already have like an existing merchandising thing because you're not gonna be willing to give up your merchandise business, right? And Webtoon is gonna want that or another company is gonna want that, not necessarily just Webtoon, but any company that's an investor is gonna want that part of their merchandising. You're not gonna wanna give that up. It's tough. I think if your goal is story, stick with the story. If your goal is merch, start with the merch. That's the easiest way to say it. How did your first Webtoon perform? Mine's not doing bad, 300 views with three chapters out. My first Webtoon was God Game. I think it's sitting at 15 million views. It has like 80 or so chapters out. I think it's doing okay. We're doing an anime, so it's it's not bad. But my, I'll tell you a few series that aren't doing well. You know, Bandit King was a series that was doing okay, but I personally did not like how it was coming out, so I canceled it myself. One example. You know, there's some dubs, some losses. Thank you guys so much for watching today's Q&A video. If you guys learned something, make sure to like and comment the special word for today's video, which is gold comment gold if you got to this part in the video in the comments and i'll know that you got to the end and leave any questions that you want me to answer on next week's q a if you want more educational content make sure to join us on patreon it's free for certain tiers and then there's there's also paid tiers to get stuff like scripts behind the scenes development advice that kind of stuff and also just being able to submit your questions directly on patreon so that i can see them in every video thank you guys so much for watching peace